All right, welcome back everybody. Thanks for joining me again for another video about the Pilatus PC-12. This is Gene, and I got another great question from a viewer about the uh, heating and cooling systems on the PC-12, which are a little bit unique, so I thought it'd be good to make a quick video about this. I'm going to try to not ramble so much in this one, but uh, easier said than done for me. <laughs> but I uh, thought the easiest way to go through this would be just to jump into X-Plane here. This is the PC-12 uh, by Carinata with Reality Expansion Pack and X-Plane 11. And I have never really used this, uh, but for to record the, uh, the, the video where I'm comparing this to the real airplane. So uh, please excuse me. I don't know my way around the sim too well, but I think we'll get through this fine. So uh, let's jump right into it. I'm going to get some juice going to the airplane here. We'll turn the standby bus on, <clears throat> bat one and bats two on. Oops, clicked the wrong switch. There we go. 24.3 volts. And somebody before us left all the lights on. <laughs> Let's turn those off. I think it probably just loads that way, but I can't help but do this stuff when I jump in here. All right, this is how we would want it when we first jumped into the airplane. Switch the inverter over. So uh, I'm gonna see if I can slew across here so we can get a better view of the cooling and actually heating panel. It says cooling at the top, but you got cooling up here and then heating below it. Pardon all the clicking from the uh, inertial separator. If you watch my other video, you've, uh, you know it doesn't actually make that sound in the real airplane, but anyway, so we have uh, four buttons here for cooling and then just the one button here for heating. And like I said, the, the PC-12 is a little bit unique in that we can actually run the VCCS, which stands for Vapor Cycle Control System, which is the air conditioning system on the airplane on the ground on GPU power. Uh, if you don't know what GPU is, it's a ground power unit. It's a little portable generator with a plug you can plug into the airplane and uh, you just get your power through the cable and you can actually run the, the AC on the ground, which is really nice on those hot days on the ramp. And uh, the older PC-12s in particular, I think they kind of improved it a little bit, a little bit with the new NGX, but the AC is notorious for not really keeping up that well if it's super hot, but it's certainly better than nothing. And I can tell you from a lot of years of flying airplanes that didn't have air conditioning that uh, it, it certainly beats just baking in the airplane with uh, only a blower fan or you know just having to open a window so but it's not the best it's not the worst like I said I think they improved it with the NGX I haven't actually flown the NGX myself so I can't vouch for that but anyway so here's our system button and uh, that just turns on the system so if we turn that on <clears throat> the other four or excuse me the other three switches light up and then we move over here and we have the cool or recirc button. So right now we're on cool, which means the VCCS is turned on. So the VCCS is the air conditioning unit in the back of the airplane. It's up in the hell hole in the aft fuselage, just forward of the tail. And uh, it works pretty much just like an air conditioning system in your car does. It has refrigerant gas in there. Uh, it has a compressor condenser, all that stuff. There's an inlet and an exhaust on either side of the aft fuselage for drawing air in and then spitting it out. And it just cools the air down and pumps it into the cabin through some ducting. Nothing super magical about it, but it's not engine driven like uh, you'll find on some, or actually most uh, jets. Uh, turbofan aircraft have PACs, they call them PACs, which is an acronym for pneumatic air conditioning kit. And those are engine driven, so you've got to have either the APU or an engine running to actually have the air conditioning system running in the airplane. But we don't have an APU in the PC-12, so luckily we can just hook the GPU up and run the AC on the ground. So it's a really nice feature of the PC-12. So yeah, right now we've got the, the VCCS turned on. If I go to recirc, that's just, that stands for recirculation. So that turns the VCCS off and it just keeps air blowing through the vents. We have electric blower fans that just push air through the cabin through the ducting. Um, so if it's a hot day, we'll start out with the VCCS on like that. Uh, we'll have the AC pumping. And then after we take off and climb up to altitude, you know, once you get up above 16,000, 18,000 feet, even in the middle of the summer, it's nice and cold up there and you don't need the AC anymore. You can turn it off. Um, but anyway, so that's what that button does. This button down here is either the top selection is vent only and the bottom is vent slash flood. Vent means the vent fans and there's a separate button here for fans high or low. So these two kind of work together. So normally how you have it is vent high. The vent fans are the um, kind of lower powered fans that just are, are used for most operations just to put air through the ducts, through the uh, overhead vents that you have. They call them gaspers in the PC-12, but it's just like the overhead vents that you have on an airliner with the little twisty valve and you open it up to have it spit more air out. We have those actually up here in the cockpit too. 
So these are a little bit different than the style on the back, but you can see a couple there. Then we've got a couple here on either side. And then uh, you've got some uh, air outlets down along the floor. Uh, and so if you have just the vent fans on, air is going to be coming out of those. And then you can set, you know, high or low for those. If you go vent plus flood, the vent fans still work the same way. But the flood fan, which is a separate independent fan in the back of the cabin, back by the baggage area, will turn on. And it'll just completely <laughs> move a whole bunch of air around. It'll just, I mean... You know, it, it's crazy powerful, but uh, a lot of people don't actually like that thing on in the back because it's so noisy. But if it's really hot, you just got on the airplane, on, you know, it's a hot day and you really want to cool the cabin down as fast as possible, you can turn that flood fan on and it'll really move a lot of air around in the back. Like I said, we, we had an owner <clears throat> that I uh, used to fly for who didn't ever want that on just because it makes it tough to talk back there. You can't really have a conversation with that thing on because it makes so much noise. But some people will take the, you know, the cooler temperature and just deal with the noise. But uh, anyway... So yeah, normally you just have the vent uh, fans on, you know, high or low, usually high, and then cooler recirc. And like I said, that'll spit cold air out of the overhead vents. Now, the heating um, works a little bit differently. It's independent from the cooling system, so this is just either on or off, and it's an electrical heater. So both the, you know, this is actually all electrical heating and cooling. Um, this doesn't use any bleed air or anything like that. These are electrical systems up here. So you can actually run the cabin heating on the ground on GPU power as well, which is really nice for the cold days in the wintertime when you're trying to heat the cabin up before the pastures get there. You can hit that button and it'll turn on the electrical heater and it'll just pump some hot air into the cabin. So the electrical heating is here to supplement the ECS. So now I'm going to pan down here. And we'll look at the ECS, which is this switch right here. And I have mentioned this in some previous videos, but that has three settings. It's a rocker switch that's so off, auto in the middle, or manual. Auto is where we have it set for normal operations, and this utilizes bleed air from the engine. So it routes bleed air off the engine, runs it through a heat exchanger, and it cools it down, and then it pumps it into the cabin. The ECS air will come out of floor vents that are all along the left and right sides of the cabin. So we have a temperature knob for that down here that we can twist clockwise or counterclockwise, cold or hot, to change the temperature of that ECS bleed air. So this uses bleed air. It has nothing to do with the electrical heating or cooling. It's a completely independent system. So you don't have to have the electrical heating or cooling systems turned on at all. It's usually good to at least have the vent fans turned on on recirc, even if you're not using the VCCS, just so that the pastors have some control over airflow back there. If they want a little bit of fresh air on their face, you know, they can turn that, that vent on over their head. Uh, so we have that on pretty much at all times, but you wouldn't have to. The ECS is sufficient for temperature control in um, the milder climates. So, and then of course the ECS also is responsible for pressurizing the cabin. So that's on all the time. So you're always getting fresh air into the cabin that is uh, whatever temperature you select right here. So it's really two separate independent systems. ECS is primary. That uses the bleed air. You can control the temperature there. And then uh, to supplement that, you've got your electrical heating and cooling up here that you can use as well. So now, of course, on the ground, uh, when you're hooked up to a GPU and the engine isn't running yet, of course, you don't have any bleed air. So this is turned off. So all you have in that case is your electrical heating and cooling up here for preconditioning. So that's what we would use before boarding. Um, now, a couple other little notes on this. Um, some of the uh, older PC-12s actually have foot warmers, and I flew a Series 9 Legacy PC-1245 that had these, and uh, there's a little switch down here right in front of the uh, your right knee if you're sitting in the pilot seat uh, for the... Uh, I forget what it says on the switch. I think it just says... Uh, maybe foot warming. I don't remember. Anyway, it's you've got little foot warmers and blowers down uh, right above where the rudder pedals are, where the air spits out, and it, it'll just warm your feet up on a cold day. It's pretty nice if you get in and you want to warm your feet up. Uh, but it's pretty noisy, and you know, it's uh, you don't really have to have it. It's a little bit overkill. It doesn't get used very much, so you don't see too many of those around anymore. Um, anyway, down here, I did want to show you. We have an ECS firewall shut off. And this is a paddle, and you, if you just pull out on that paddle, what happens is the uh, ECS automatically shuts off, so you stop drawing in bleed air. 
So you would use this in an emergency if you had smoke in the cockpit or you had an engine fire, you know, there was fire in the engine compartment and there was your bleed air was contaminated. You would pull that ECS lever to cut off the bleed air to the cabin and then it also does that. It does two things. It does that and then it also opens up a little scoop outside of the airplane underneath the co-pilot seat and it'll, it's a ram air scoop and it'll just scoop in a bunch of fresh air into the cabin to uh, ventilate and vacate the cabin of any smoke in there. Uh, and of course you also have your, your oxygen mask that you would don as well in that scenario. So that's your ECS uh, fireball shutoff if you need that. That's something you practice in the simulator uh, every, every six or 12 months when you go back to the sim for uh, recurrent training. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that's, uh, that's a little bit about the uh, heating and cooling system in the PC-12. Uh, right down here on the Legacy, you've got a cabin temperature <coughs> indicator. It's in degrees Celsius. And you like to try to keep that right around 21 degrees, 21 to like 23 or 4, depending on who's in the back. You know, people like different things, but somewhere right around there, you can monitor the uh, temperature throughout the flight. You also have an underfloor heater, and let me turn around. A lot of people that are new to the airplane now, they've got the curtain up in the sim. Nice. If we could remove this curtain and maybe there's a way to do it, let me know in the comments if there is. But <clears throat> down on the floor here, there's a little grate and it's an intake air for the underfloor heater. And it actually heats the avionics bay underneath the floor to keep the avionics nice and warm in flight. And uh, it's a separate system from the cabin environmental control, but that is down there. So when you're loading bags under the airplane, you don't want to block that uh, air intake for the underfloor heater. So just a little tidbit for you. Anyway, uh, hope that uh, is uh, helpful to you guys. Let me know if you have any other questions in the comments, anything else I can explain to you about the PC-12 or just anything else. Uh, I love talking flying and uh, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it guys. I'm coming close to I think 500 subscribers now, which is like nothing to <laughs> most people on YouTube. But for me, that's a pretty, that's a pretty big accomplishment. So really appreciate the love guys. Appreciate the likes, the comments and everything. Uh, keep them coming. Definitely motivates me to keep making these videos. And uh, yeah, let me know. Give me some more video uh, suggestions and ideas for different systems and things I can, I can talk about because uh, I love getting in here and doing this. So, all right. Thanks for watching, guys. See you on the next one.